For me, the beauty of film photography lies in the simplicity of the medium and the ability to work with a wide range of film stocks that all provide you with unique individual looks to build your images around. But it's the part after the image is made, the scanning process, that is by far the one aspect that requires practice and dedication to fully understand and master. For me so far, the biggest drawback of scanning at home hasn't been the uh, detail that I've been able to pull out of my medium format negatives. It's been the color that I've been able to get out of using the Epson scan software. Um, up until this point, uh, it's always just felt like the results have kind of been flat and a bit lifeless when it comes to the color. And uh, no matter how much tweaking I do afterwards in Lightroom or Photoshop, I just struggle to really get results that I'm happy with uh, compared to the scans that I was getting from the lab. Just to bring everyone up to speed, I currently use an Epson V500 scanner. Up until last week, I'd been using the Epson scan software, which was working okay, but I still wanted to try out some of the other offerings to see if I could get any better results. So my plan for this video is to scan some film using the ViewScan software, just as a way to help anyone who's maybe thinking of giving the program a shot. And then I'm also gonna scan the same negative using Epson scan and we can compare the results. And I do wanna just mention quickly that by no means am I an expert with ViewScan, but I feel like I'm at a point with the research and the practice that I've done that I understand most of the settings and the options that I need to use to get my images looking the way that I want. So. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I have some negatives loaded into the scanner. This is Portra 400 that was shot on a Fuji GA645. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first scan with ViewScan, go through my workflow with the program, and then I'm gonna do a quick scan using Epson Scan just to show the differences between the two programs and why I've been really happy with ViewScan. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up ViewScan. Okay, so ViewScan's open, and the one thing I just want to mention right off the bat is that probably my biggest knock on ViewScan is that the uh, the interface or the usability of it, uh, it's very confusing at first until you learn the program. Um, if there's anything they can improve on, it would definitely be uh, the layout and kind of the explanation of some of the settings. Okay, so when you first open ViewScan, you're going to have two tabs up here. Um, the first one, Options, you want to switch that to Professional. And this is gonna open up a whole number of different tabs along the top, um, but we're gonna start in input. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure your scanner selected, obviously in this scenario, uh, Perfection V500 is my scanner. Um, under mode, we wanna switch it from flatbed to transparency, because we're scanning negative film. Media, we wanna to go to color negative in this scenario, because we're with Portra 400. Uh, bits per pixel, I leave this or set it to 48 bit RGB. I want to go the highest that I can. Um, 48 RGB is what I used to use with Epson scan. That was the highest quality setting in Epson scan. Um, so that's what I stick with in view scan. So then there's the next two tabs are the resolution tabs. There's preview resolution and there's scan resolution. So essentially preview resolution is the resolution it's going to scan the preview file at in the program. Um, you can switch this to 1600. I typically set it to 800 and I find that gives me a nice balance of uh, speed versus quality in terms of the preview and, and how it looks. So the next tab we have here is the scan resolution. I set mine to 3200. Um, this has just produced the results that I've been happy with. I know there's a lot of debate online with flatbeds, uh, so many different suggestions about what DPI you should use. A lot of people will say don't go higher than 1600 on a flatbed. I've been scanning at 3200 and I've been happy with the results, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. The next two tabs, crop, um, I don't touch, filter, I leave infrared clean set to light. I found that uh, ViewScan actually does a pretty good job of this dust removal. All of the other settings I don't touch. I don't wanna sharpen in the program. I don't wanna do any grain reduction or anything like that. So the next tab is the color tab. And this is probably the most important one and where you really build the look of the image that you're gonna scan. I just do wanna mention up here, I'm gonna turn this off. So graph off. And when you use ViewScan for the first time, um, you want when you come to the color tab, you're want, gonna wanna go up here to image, 
and you're gonna wanna turn on graph image. And this basically gives you a histogram of the scanned image, which you'll see once we do a preview scan. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, click uh, preview and we'll let the scanner do its thing. Okay, so ViewScan's gone ahead and done a preview. So I'm gonna zoom in here and much like with Epson scan, um, ViewScan's gonna do kind of an initial um, selection here around one of the negatives. I'm gonna make that just a little bit bigger to try and get as much as I can of the negative selected. And then the first thing I do is I go up to color balance and I always go to auto levels. And this is very similar to Epson scan when you do an auto exposure. Basically, view scan's just gonna, gonna do an automatic uh, color and exposure adjustment. The next two important settings, you have black point and you have white point. So it'd be the same as an Epson scan as setting your uh, histogram points just to make sure that you aren't clipping any information. So uh, default black point set to zero, that's great. We're gonna leave it there. White point is set to one. So what I do is I always drag it back to zero and then I click it up one notch. Um, and for some reason, going from zero to 0 0.02 changes the image drastically. And I'm not too sure why. Um, I haven't been able to, to figure it out by doing any reading or anything like that. But all I know is that I don't set my white point to zero. I just click up one notch. The other thing we're gonna to do too is we're just gonna click this tab up here, cropped area, and that's gonna give us a f kind of a full size preview of the image itself, which is pretty helpful. So the next two settings, we have curve low and we have curve high, and these are default settings, and they can work there. Um, sometimes they will work set as is. Basically, the way I've interpreted these, curve low, you can look at as a contrast adjustment, and you'll see as you drag it up, you really work a lot of contrast into the image. It's almost like you're pulling down the mid-tones and the shadows. So that can be handy. And then curve high really just deals with the highlight portion of the curve. And you can see the higher you go, the flatter your image gets. But I always like to leave these at their default settings uh, just initially. And then we have brightness. And this simply just adjusts the brightness of the image. We're gonna go ahead and leave that set at one. So the first thing I do after I do my auto levels is I go here to the uh, film profiles. And the nice thing about ViewScan is it has uh, film stock profiles built in. And I've had pretty good success with them. The funny thing is though, is that there is no Kodak Portra 400. Um, there, well, technically there is a Kodak Portra 400, but it's the older 400 VC or NC. And there's also no Fuji Pro 400H. Um, for me, I don't shoot a ton of 400H, so that's not too big of a deal. Um, what I do for the Kodak Portra is I use the Portra 400NC profile, and I found that it works pretty well. The biggest thing that I'm looking for is that it, it gives me those kind of Portra blues, um, which is kind of the most important thing for me in terms of the results with ViewScan. So we're gonna go ahead here, we're gonna go to negative vendor, Kodak, um, it's going to pull up Advantix just default. It's going to look terrible. Uh, we'll go down to Portra. And then we're going to go to 400 NC. And it does not look good right off the bat, but we're going to do some tweaking. So that's why I'll always do auto levels and then I'll come down and I'll pick my uh, film profile next. And from here I'll tweak. So you'll see that obviously the image is very flat and very bright. And for me, I approach ViewScan the, the same way as I would with Epson Scan. I'm still trying to get a very flat file out of this. I'm not looking to do too many adjustments in the program, um, but in this case, this is way too flat. So typically what I'll do is I will pull the brightness down a little bit in this scenario because it's too bright. You can see the histogram at the bottom adjusting there. And then in this scenario, I may adjust the curve low just to bring a bit of contrast back into the image but I'm not gonna do too much because I will um, edit this afterwards. So there is one thing I wanna point out quickly and that is after we chose our film profile, um, now the image, uh, the, the color balance is off. And for me, that's not a huge deal because I'm gonna correct that after in Lightroom, but there is the option of right clicking anywhere in the image on a, what you would think is a neutral area and ViewScan will do kind of um, an automatic adjustment to try and balance your image. So we'll go ahead, usually I'll, I'll try this out on, on something like the pavement. 
So we'll right click. And it's really kind of just trial and error. You'll see that now the image is very cool. Um, again, sometimes you'll have good results with this. Sometimes it'll take a while and you have to try clicking all sorts of different areas. So that's actually not too bad there. I'm still gonna adjust this in Lightroom, but I'll probably roll with that for now. So the only other tab here that I worry about in the color panel is the output color space. And I'm not gonna dive too much into color spaces because it is a little bit more of a complex topic, but for, for anyone who knows a little more about it, um, even if you don't, sRGB is the smallest color space you would typically use in a photography workflow. Uh, Adobe RGB is a large color space that is preferable for editing images. So naturally you would wanna output your image with, a, with the largest color space possible to make sure that you're not clipping any of your colors. But you'll see here when I pick Adobe RGB, there's a major shift on the screen. Uh, things become a lot more desaturated and uh, there's nothing wrong with that because we're gonna tweak things later, but it's just kind of caught me off guard because most other editing programs are color managed and when you uh, selected different color spaces, you wouldn't actually see that change on the screen. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead with Adobe RGB. So I'm pretty happy with the image as is. It's very flat, but it has all the information I need. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and scan it. But before we do that, we're gonna go to the output tab. This is the last one I use. Um, up here, you have default folder. I'm just gonna send this to the desktop for now. And then usually JPEG, here will be selected by default. We wanna export as TIFF, so we're gonna uncheck JPEG. Um, we're gonna keep TIFF selected. You can change your file name structure up here if you want. Um, we're gonna select 48-bit RGB as the TIFF file type, and you wanna set your compression to off, or at least that's what I do. Again, my goal is to get the uh, highest quality image out of here possible to edit later, and then I can export as I, as I want for a master. So that's it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click scan and we'll wait for the scanner to do its thing. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close view scan. We're gonna go ahead and open up Epson scan. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, scan here with Epson scan um, so we can compare. I'm not gonna talk about uh, how to use it too much. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do a preview. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, uh, just tweak this quickly. So my workflow with Epson Scan is very similar to ViewScan in terms of just getting a flat file out of the program to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do auto exposure, go to my histogram adjustment. We're gonna adjust the white and black points to make sure we're not clipping any information. Brighten the image up a little bit. And I think it will leave it at that. Sometimes I will do a gray balance uh, with Epson scan, but it can be very hit or miss. So we'll go ahead and close that. We're gonna do a quick scan. Okay, so we have both files loaded in here and the first one is the view scan file. Looks pretty nice, even straight from the scanner. Um, there are still obviously adjustments I would do to this, pulling it into Photoshop, doing some sharpening, and then doing some color balance and contrast adjustments. Um, but we'll go ahead and look at the Epson scan file and drastically different. So view scan, Epson scan, view scan, Epson scan. The difference between the two is just pretty crazy in my opinion. Obviously you could process the Epson scan and depending on your workflow, get it to a point where it looks like the view scan file. I know there are a lot of photographers using Epson scan who have created a workflow that they're happy with, but for me to be able to start right off the bat with a file that looks like this compared to a file that looks like this uh, is just a no brainer. For me working with the view scan file, I know it's just gonna be simple adjustments. Like I said, color balance contrast, whereas with the Epson scan file, to get this to a point that I'm happy with, 
I'm definitely gonna have to jump into the different color channels, uh, you know, pull some, say, blue out of the shadows, pull some yellow, green out of the highlights, and then adjust saturation levels of individual colors, things like that. And I'm sure that I could get it probably to a point that I was happy with, but I mean, for me, the view scan results are just so drastically different and the colors uh, right out of the software are, are pretty nice. So I hope that this tutorial uh, and overview was helpful. Uh, my suggestion would be go check out ViewScan. You can download uh, a trial version before you buy it. It's $99 to buy. Um, but what I did is before I bought it, I downloaded the trial and I spent a couple hours uh, scanning in ViewScan and then scanning the same image in Epson Scan and just comparing the results. Um, the ViewScan trial is watermarked, but obviously, you know, if it's something you're, you're happy with, you can go ahead and buy the software. But uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. And I think that for me, it's going to be a staple in my uh, home scanning post-production workflow.